We got up at 5.30. I checked my emails. In the morning, I get a daily devotional sent to me by um, a pastor friend of ours. I just look up the verse in the Bible, and it helps me start my day. From there, I usually just go downstairs, feed the dogs. At about 6.30, 6.45, we left for the airport. Chad and Mirko are two people that I work with that helped organize this event. We got there, there was only one person in line. We were there super early. So we pretty much either kind of caught up on rest that we didn't get the night before there or on the way to Kansas City. We got on the ground in Kansas City about 30 minutes. Because I'm a Christian skateboarder, we get people interested in me coming to their church and doing demos. 11,000 flyers, and then... The person who contacted us from the church's youth ministry, his name was John Perkey. We went to a shop, a skate shop that I've never even been to. And then right when we walked in, like, you know, Jamie Thomas is coming, like, yeah, he's coming. Definitely a blessing to have him there trying to, you know, do everything he could to make our stay comfortable. So, I mean, people were really, really excited, so... It's always good when the course is, you know, good. That wasn't the case here, though. The, the course was all well made, but it wasn't designed in a way that there were that many options. Well, first I'd check the clock to see what time it was, and then I thought how much time we had to try and change anything we could because uh, it definitely needed some changes for me to even do a demo. We made some things that weren't skatable skatable and made some new obstacles. We made the best of the scenario, and it worked out good, and that was almost a fun project in itself. It was actually a better case than going there and it being good and us not ever meeting the people who helped us rebuild it. After like every trick, you had to rest for a few minutes because of the cold air, you know, it doesn't supply your lungs with enough oxygen. And one push across the course, you're wheezing. They told me there was going to be a lot of kids and they kept kind of warning us. I really never even think about that until I'm there. And then sometimes it is pretty overwhelming when you actually get there and you see how many kids there are. And then you get out of the van and then you're all on your own. They're all there to see you. I felt good about going up and you know speaking. I haven't done it in a while and I just kind of wanted to get my mind right to do it. Jamie, there's a sea of kids, but if you're not looking at each kid in particular, you can't even really acknowledge that they're all there looking at you. Thanks for checking all this way to freeze and uh, watch me have a hard time in the cold. I felt that when I had found what I think is the meaning of life, I wanted to let everybody know that I think that this is what it's all about. And for a while there, though, I was really, I was really questioning. What, what the Lord's plan was for me. I felt like I was humbled. I think it's, it's a great way to reach kids, tell them that, you know, there's more in their life than skateboarding. I just want to thank you all. Thank you, God bless. Thanks. The next part is really easy. You sign autographs for two hours. After speaking, it felt really good. I felt really energized. I know of some spots in town, so I'd like to go and see if we can try and skate around town and keep the energy going. It was definitely freezing and desolate, but we just kind of skated and turned some whatever into skatable objects, and it was kind of fun. It ended up getting into like 3, 3.30. We just had to call it a night. We got into the hotels probably like 4, 4.30. From there, I checked my email, called my wife, let her know I was okay, and then we just went to bed. Three, four hours sleep <laughs> for the second day in a row, but I'll try and catch up tonight.
When we were first creating the format for Form 1, we wanted the video to start off strong. The opener segment came about to highlight the most influential tricks caught on tape in the months before the release of each issue. From the hundreds of openers in the first 50 issues of Form 1, over the last nine years, we've chosen our 50 greatest. Each one of the tricks you're about to see are important in their own way, and each have helped pave the way for the progression of skateboarding. Hubba Hideout shows up more than any other spot in our 50 greatest openers. Coming in at number 43 is Gershon Mosley's Switch Smith. Hey, this is Tony Hawk. You're watching 411 50. My first memories are just rolling off the drop. It was only like a couple decks high. I eventually taking that to outside in the streets and cruising around and then just getting a normal board and just started skating. It's weird. Like, people just don't do what they like. Like, they'll go to school make their parents happy when they hate what they're doing and they work their whole life to finally get money and then they just realize you know they're not even happy with it I think that's generally what our society messed up from like you just got to do what you like you know what I mean?